Back in April, I covered the controversy at the Stronger Men's Conference that was put on, of course, by Pastor John Lindell's James River Church. The interaction that had there between Lindell and Mark Driscoll, when Mark Driscoll, of course, had condemned that uh, dancer, Alex Magala, you know, um, very controversial individual uh, who decided to entertain the guests there at the men's conference with uh, some interaction on a poll, something that was not very becoming of something that should have you know, been a, a true Christian men's conference. But this is what goes on in churches today. It's about entertainment over the actual you know, message of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we truly are seeing some crazy things. Now, of course, from there, the back and forth between Driscoll and Lindell continued. They supposedly made up on stage later on at the event when they were singing each other's praises. You even had Lindell refer to Mark Driscoll as the modern day John the Baptist. Hmm, interesting. And then, of course, everything changed when Driscoll continued to you know, talk about this, the Jezebel spirit. And look, let me just say, for those that, if you missed my coverage on this, let me just say this because it's important. Both of these pastors are disqualified, okay? I'm not on either side, really, at all. Uh, Driscoll's past, we know, at Mars Hill, I've covered that. Uh, you know, his his harsh leadership practices, all of that. Uh, Lindell and James River, very cult-like church in their own right, which uh, I'm going to get into more here in just a little bit. But then what did we see from there? According to John Lindell, and he addressed this all in a church service that was like a week or two after the Stronger Men's Conference that apparently... Driscoll had contacted one of his sons and that Driscoll was apparently trying to convince them to take over the church from, from John Lindell uh, because he's just out of his mind when it comes to this Alex, you know, Magala stuff. And he was even sending his son, you know, the social media posts from Magala showing, you know, inappropriate photos and everything, which is, which is true. I mean, look, I don't have to, to agree that Mark Driscoll, you know, shouldn't be a pastor, but I can agree with him on on certain points. I mean, hey, even a broken clock is right twice a day, so I guess Driscoll can fit into that. But Lindell had addressed this during the service and, you know, said that Driscoll was sowing disunity within James River. And I'm going to come back to that word disunity here in just a little bit, so I want you to hold on to that because there's more. He said Driscoll was sowing disunity. He said that he needed to repent said that he tried reaching out to him, but he didn't want to speak to him. You know, Matthew 18 is something that Lindell liked to throw around a lot, uh, which is just something that pastors like to hide behind uh, when faced with these issues in their church with controversial matters. Uh, he even said that uh, there was apparently threats made against one of the workers at the church. They had to shut the phone lines down one day because of all this backlash that was coming in. Uh, it was just one big mess. So what happened after that? You even had Lindell that was defending his position to invite Magala to the conference. Said that he had been a born-again Christian for like over 10 years, had a family, all these things, right? Except it was then Alex Magala who came out in his own social media post, put out his own video to set the record straight to actually <laughs> tell John Lindell, well, you're actually not being truthful. He said, I'm not a born-again Christian. I'm an Orthodox Christian. And he says, I have my own version of Christianity, which is always very dangerous when you hear anybody say something like that because it's not the true, you know, you know, Bible-believing type of Christianity that we should be living. No. Uh, and then he said that I haven't, again, I haven't been a born-again Christian for 10 years. I, you know, I have my own, you know, it's all, all this where he just, it, all of Lindell's statements were completely disproven. Everything that he said about this guy and, you know, his past and all that was just a, a complete and total lie. But he defended it. So what happened after that? This is important. I got to review all this to give you context about where we're going to go here. But there was a statement that was then put out by James River Church that in fact they admitted they were wrong about Alex Magala. They did not do their research. They said that it was made known to them. They received information. Yeah, I wonder where you received that information from. Probably from Magala's video. That Magala has a very questionable past. We were not made aware of inappropriate social media photos by him, which they were. And, you know, Magala will not, basically not be invited to any more future 
uh, events for the Stronger Men's Conference. Uh, but neither will Driscoll. And they, they, they immediately went back to Driscoll because they just couldn't let this go. And they said, but we maintain our position that Driscoll needs to repent for sowing disunity and for causing all these problems within James River. But there wasn't really any accountability on, you know, the behalf of James River and John Lindell that they, you know, basically lied about Magala. They defended this guy being a born-again Christian, that he had every right to be at the Stronger Men's Conference. It was just a quick thing they put out there that, oh, due to information we didn't previously know, right? I mean, your vetting process is terrible. If you didn't actually know about this guy's past and truly look into it, how can anybody trust your church that, you know, any of your other pastors are solid? How about any of your teachers and any of your other ministries? I mean, come on. It just makes sense. So we thought that we are past this. I, I said to myself at the time when I was covering this, like, you know, okay, I think this is going to be the last time I talk about this. And then I, I say that and then boom, something else came out. So here I am back again with this. Now we have, and this is, man, this is even like, this is even worse because a congregant, well, I guess now a former congregant of James River Church. I'm, I'm going to get, look, I, I got to, look, we're, we're going to get into this. There's a lot. Get comfortable, grab a, you know, some juice, some water, a cup of coffee. We're going to get in it. I got to, I got to welcome you guys. I didn't even, you know, go through my proper intro, but welcome everybody to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all, which you'll find a link to in the description section of all my videos. Also, if you really enjoy and appreciate the work that I do here, think about donating to help me out. There's a few different ways you could do that. One by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Hey, do you want to get these videos before they ever hit my main YT platform? Well, when you sign up to Patreon, that's what you're going to get along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me over there. Again, it's patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing. Those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. All right. So this congregant, now former congregant, is speaking out about an incident that occurred at James River Church. Now, look, I talked about that word disunity and how John Lindell used that to describe Mark Driscoll. That word came up again when it comes to this congregant, Rahila Peshin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Rahila, if you're if you're watching, I apologize if I mispronounce any part of your name uh, as it comes to that. But Rahila was a congregant of James River. And what she did here, her crime was daring to give her opinion on social media relating to the Stronger Men's Conference. A big no-no. And this again goes back to what I said about cult-like behavior on behalf of James River Church and John Lindell. Here's what she did. She simply took, and she's, she's a mother, by the way. She took social media. And, I, and I'm going to have a link in the description, by the way, so you can, you can look at the post that she put up. But she said that, you know, First and foremost, she said that she respects James River Church and Pastor John Lindell for everything that they've done throughout the years in their ministry. So she wasn't even like bashing him or anything else like that. However, she said that she disagreed with Lindell inviting Magala to this conference and even talked about how she didn't really think that the public rebuke that Lindell gave to Driscoll was appropriate. She feels that there should have been, you know, a softer approach to this, that this all shouldn't have been played out the way that it did at the conference. And, you know, subsequently what followed uh, after with, you know, the messages that he gave at the church when he was talking about, you know, Driscoll sowing disunity uh, and all of this. Uh, she talked about how, you know, obviously Alex Magala, somebody that, you know, should have been looked into prior, but nevertheless was still invited there anyway. So again, she was just, you know, really expressing her, you know, concern over how this was all handled. She didn't like it, and she wished that it could have been handled in a, in a better manner in hopes that it could be, you know, addressed better in the future. So, and again, I'm paraphrasing. You can read her full uh, social media post down below in the description. So what happens after this? Well, apparently, because again, she puts this out on her social media, 
the church sees this, right? Whether it's John Lindell or, or, or probably somebody else that handles the church's social media, maybe Rahila ended up tagging them in the post, but they read the post and Rahila is confronted at James River when she apparently shows up the next time. Now, she is confronted by, this is crazy to me. She is confronted by, you know, not Lindell, but one of the other pastors there, along with three security, there was apparently a meeting that they had, and they got three church security members that show up there to this meeting as well, along with two members of the of the sheriff's deputy's office. There, there. So they got law enforcement there as a part of this meeting. And they tell Rahila that your post caused great disunity at James River. See, I told you I'd get back to the whole disunity thing. Your post caused great disunity here at James River for, again, disagreeing, disagreeing. You can't disagree with the pastor, guys. You can't do that. Your post caused great disunity disagreeing with the pastor on the Stronger Men's Conference. By the way, let me say this. Did they interview every single person that attends James River? Did every single person that attends James River see the post that Rahila put out? Did, did that really cause disunity? Or is this just words coming from, you know, John Liddell? Of course, it's just words coming from John Liddell. I'm sure there's a great many people that attend James River that actually agree with what Rahila wrote about the situation. I sure do. And I think that it was actually very well written. Didn't have any problem with it at all. She was actually being very respectful. She wasn't bashing the guy again, like I said. She wasn't using bad words, nothing like that, no. So as they continued on here in the meeting, they said that we we really want to encourage you to rethink your stance on this. Ah, okay. So again, think the way we think or else. And then they concluded with this by saying that until you retract that social media post, until you retract it, until you take it down, you are hereby banned from all further James River Church services. You are not allowed on the premise. They actually banned this woman from attending church there because of her social media posts. Now, by the way, there, also in this uh, link that I'm going to put in the description, there is going to be a clip. There is a video clip that I'm going to include with it that will actually show Rahila being escorted out by not just the church security, but also the sheriff's deputy officers. There was a total of five men, five men escorting this woman off the church premises. Because again, they said that until you can recant your post, change your thinking as it comes to this, you are no longer welcome at James River. What type of a message does that send to those that may be thinking about attending the church? Is that the message of Christ? Is that something that Jesus would do? Sorry, you don't agree with the pastor on this? You're gone. But let me bring this up. Because again, James River had even put out a statement weeks before this that said that, well, yeah, we were kind of wrong about Alex Magala all along, and he's not welcome back at the, you know, at the next Stronger Men's Conference or any future ones for that matter. But no, apparently, still, if you give an opinion about how it was originally handled, well, the church doesn't like that very much, and they will see to it that you are not allowed on the premises. Now, in this video clip, you can hear Rahila talking to these officers saying, what did I do? What did I do wrong? All I did was put out a post. That's what she was saying. All I did was put out a post. And the officers are talking about trespassing and all, like, this is ridiculous. And again, it, everybody should see, I, I hope you all will share this video around. I, I really do because the story got major attention when it first happened in April, and now with this news that they're apparently kicking people out of the church that don't agree with the pastor on this, and especially if you go on social media and talk about it, that's crazy. So again, I, I hope you share this around. Uh, for Rahila, let me see that. Let, let me say this: you know, she watches. If you watch this, Rahila, you are better off elsewhere. Okay, as crazy as this is, and as ridiculous as this is, okay. Look at this in a way as a blessing in disguise. You don't need to be a part of a church like this. And I'm sure that she knows this. You know, now that all of this has happened, I'm sure she didn't think and expect that her writing about this was going to cause such problems and was actually going to lead to her getting banned from the church. You know, they allow, let me, let me say this, they allow a lot worse in church. They allow, you know, 
inappropriate behavior from pastors. They don't they don't care nothing about that. They they let you know you know all sorts of of uh, dirty dirty individuals in there. Uh, they let them not only attend but even preach in the church. But no, apparently for Rahila, you can't question the narrative coming from John Lindell, or you're no longer welcome at James River. Absolutely unbelievable. But again. I will put that link for you in the description. And I want to hear your thoughts on this. So please let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Rahila, if you're out there, if you're watching, I would love to hear from you too about this. Or maybe someone you know, Rahila, you can get her, you know, you know, share this video to her too. Because, uh, you know, I just would love to get your thoughts on the aftermath of this. I'm sorry this happened to you. Uh, but again, these wolves are outing themselves. And, and again, I don't know how anybody can see this and think that this is a church. It's not even a church again. It's a cult that is posing as a church. And we're seeing a lot more of those here in these last days. The apostasy, you know, the, the you know, the, the rise of this last day spirit, it, it's, it's all here. Uh, but again, I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget to, if you really enjoy and appreciate what I do here, think about donating to help me out. Remember, you can hit that super thanks button on the YT video or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description. What I want to do right now Something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing these wolves, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So, that being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do. To give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. I welcome your thoughts. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.